Hey guys, your boy Black Bones, the Kemeka the Stallion, and right now you're tuned into New Music Fridays. Peace. All right, everybody, welcome back to Rolling Out New Music Friday. I'm here with Black Bones. Black, how you feeling, my guy? I'm feeling nice. I'm feeling good today. I heard it. I heard it. So, so you just got in uh, to Atlanta on Saturday, I guess. You know, just how's the city been treating you so far? Uh, it's been it's been calm. I've been out almost every night, so that's <laughs> been stressful. But yeah, the vibe is nice. You said it's been stressful going out in Atlanta. No, like it's just been stressful being out every night. You know, and just not getting home too late. And then, you know, the time zones. You know, like come from like somewhere that's five hours behind. So that's kind of a little bit stressful. Uh, probably like 6 p.m. right now. 6 over there. Right now? Yeah. Right, hmm? it, it's not that bad. Yeah, but like, it means like right now it's, it's evening and stuff. So when I'm talking to people, I have to factor that time, you know, factor that into like my mind and stuff. So. But it's like, I guess, um, so like when you go out at night, it's like you're out in the middle of the night when it's just like 10 p.m. over here. Right, right. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, that's kind of it. I heard it, I heard it. Okay, well, let's get into the music, man. Um, so, so as I told you before, we started recording the, the Broken Yoke of, of Love. It was really like the first kind of track that caught my attention. I think I saw it on Twitter first and when, when it went viral then. And you were talking about how that was like your third, fourth single to go viral in a row um, on social media. Uh, I guess, you know, just where was your mind space at when, when you made that song? We'll, we'll start off with that. Uh, it was just, I had a show that was coming up called like uh, Breaking the Yoke of Love. That was the name of the crusade, right? So that was just supposed to be the theme song. You know, that was where my mind was at when I went to the studio to make a theme song for the crusade. But it turned out to be such a great song. Uh, you know, I was like, oh my God, this is more than I even, you know, imagined it to be. You know, so that was just... You know, it wasn't. I wasn't deep in it that much. I wasn't trying to create something so great or something. It was just, you know, it just happened. No, oh, hundred, hundred. I, I feel like uh, it's kind of like the you're 27, right? 28. 28. 28. Yeah. So, so you're at that kind of like jaded stage, I guess. Of the what moment. stage? Uh, the jaded. Should I be looking here or looking? Hey, you can, you can look, you can look at both. Like, like you can look okay. at me when I'm talking to you, and then I guess talk, look at the camera when you're answering. Okay, um, okay. But you know, like, uh, you're at the jaded stage of your romantic journey. Jaded, do you know what jaded is? Jaded. Jaded is like, you don't trust love. Like, oh, okay, like, okay. Because of your past experiences. Okay, okay. Like it's, <laughs> it's not like I don't trust love. You know, I just don't trust people generally. And I feel like, you know, human beings have, the human beings will always like, Nobody is the, the standard. People always let you down on, like, not because they want to, just because that's what humans are. And, you know, I feel like the standard, people just try to make it out that everything can be perfect and this person can give everything. And that's the part that I don't trust because I feel like we were bound to fail, kind of, you know. I guess, uh, do you have peace in, in that belief? Like, like, are you cool with that? Like, yeah. Like, um, I'm, so it manages my expectation, you know, of everything, kind of. So I'm never really thrown off, like, oh, my God, uh, belly. It's always like, you know, I always see it coming. I always, you know, expected my, my, my mind already, you know, predicted, like, a lot of things that I see, kind of. Because we cannot predict stuff. We just don't want to, you know. Right. We want to believe that everything can be perfect. But I guess, like... With that, like, kind of, like, realistic kind of view, outlook, yeah. right? I feel like it can get pretty bleak at times, you know, just realizing, you know, like, we are kind of alone and on this journey by ourselves. Like, I feel like that, that could lead you down the rabbit hole of, like, just a very dark place. Have you ever kind of gone that far with, with just realistic thinking? Or No, I think, I think there's something else that's way more important to me, which is, like, my music and the, my aspirations, you feel me? So, like... 
that aspect of my life is not my the one thing that I sit down and just be thinking and going into different rabbit holes now. Like I'm trying to, you know, do things with my music and stuff. So that's what I really think about. So I've never really been down that hole before. You kind of answered it right there, but just for like all the like, it's a lot of 15, 16 year old, 17 year old boys that are like kind of going through one of their first heartbreaks. You know, their girlfriend broke up with them or something like that. Yeah. Like what, what's the advice that you have for them? Man, I, I, I guess I'll say um, keep your eyes open. You know, like I feel like people close their eyes. And closing your eyes could make you enjoy the moment a lot more. But like for me, I'd rather be prepared, you know, because I feel like I, I live a very good life and I'm happy, you know, and that's been my theory. I don't know if it work for everybody. You know, everybody has their own way they approach things and their own way to learn from it. For me, I'm good with the way I, my life is. So if you want to be like me, it might work for you. I don't know, bro. So, so you just like, just be chilling for real. Yeah, just be chilling. I mean, but how do you just chill? Especially if you're like a person that's like always thinking about your future because like you're, su- you're a successful artist, correct? So it's like, I feel like to become a successful artist, you had to be thinking like in the early stages, okay bigger venues more listeners more streams like you know what i'm saying like in the early stages so usually those type of people there's a lot of kind of anxiety intact to it yeah attached. there's so much anxiety you know, on my music side right. yeah so i think that that just makes it such that the whole relationship side and the whole thing like it doesn't it's not as crazy for me because there's enough anxiety in the music side you know you wake up you hold your phone there's so much that can trigger you at any time, you know, as an artist, so. And speaking of that, going off of that, you know, uh, like on the music side and the anxieties of that, being an artist today, like I said, I discovered you from, from Twitter when it was Twitter. <laughs> yeah, when uh, it was Twitter. <laughs> you know, so like, like, what, what is that type of relationship of the artist today has to be active on TikTok, all the all the platforms, you got to think about how it's doing on YouTube and streaming, like, like how do you kind of like manage that? Uh, I I kind of like I have the platforms that I use like personally like really use, but uh, I I still cultivate the following everywhere else you know so I make sure to create great content and just have them put every on all these platforms you feel me because I have fans there so that kind of just connects me keeps keeps me active but I might not be like just there on this platform all the time like I I'm. I, I use Twitter, that's my default platform, uh, you know, so, but I make sure, like, I'm present on, like, a lot of these other platforms. Um, uh, I, I want to ask about, kind of, uh, so, so you on, like you said, all the platforms and stuff, I want to ask you about the crossover of, like, kind of your popularity in the States now, um, just, you know, when did you start seeing that crossover and how's that kind of support been over here in the States? I think, you know, because Nigeria is such a big country with, like, so many people, so it's always just natural, like, from beginning, the, the moment you pop in in Nigeria, the social, as a result of social media and everything, the Nigerians in diaspora kind of, you know, know what you're doing and they're in touch with what's going on over there. So, that kind of just makes it, you know, natural, you know, the transition. But, like, I'm here now to, like, even push it further, and, you know, get, like big and do like you know proper venues over here and stuff and hopefully you know that that works that works out all right all right and then speaking of i guess nigerians popping in the state size spice it's like yeah like at the top of the rap game yeah it, you could argue it because I, I don't know like who, who who wait hold on i'm gonna give you something who you think is more popping right now and, and there ain't no dish to both of them but do you think it's sexy or or ice spice so you, you, who you think more popping right now Who's more popping in the United States? Right now. Like, like who, who's the hottest, you would say, rap artist right now, you feel like, in the States? Is it Sexy Rare or is it Ice Spice? Uh, I want to I wanna say Ice Spice because I think, like, when I look at Sexy Rare, it's like, it's like um, in Nigeria also, there are different spaces, right? So they're like the artists that are really like hot in the streets. 
but there's also the artists that as hot in the streets but also have this other like like island appeal kind of like on in lagos now there's mainland and there's island there's artists that are crazy hot on the mainland right but there's also artists that are hot on the mainland and on the island right so i think like with the collaborations with Nicki minaj and stuff the billboard the barbie thing i think that's kind of like you know bigger but like i will default to you guys at the end of the day because i'm just speaking from <laughs> i'm speaking from nigeria and what i see right, right, right. from there you right. know according to you who who's the the hottest right now i feel yeah. like ice spice has had a crazy run for the past year but i think today at this moment it might be sexy because sexy, yeah. sexy's got the uh the ski like that that's like the hottest record out right now yeah I, I i heard that like last night or yeah. or something yeah she's so I feel like at this very moment she is, but for the past year, Ice Spice been running for 365 days. So yeah, that. yeah, that. that's why I said like default to you, cause yeah. you know, in the like there's so many artists in Nigeria that like they're crazy hot in the street that you you wouldn't even know. You just assume it's this 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 and this person, but like when you go there, when you're actually there, you're like, who is this guy? I'm always him. Yeah. You feel me? So I can understand that to yeah. be honest. Yeah. Had that we were just talking about uh, make make Afro beats great again. How do you feel about America's Afro beats movement? Do you feel like it's a? I don't even know if you know about PF Change, but PF Change is an Asian American food chain here in America, and it's like a Asian American food chain. Yeah, yeah, but but it's like um, how how would you describe PF Change? It's like it's a place where you can go um get like Asian food. Okay. It's kind of like in a fast food way. And it's kind of Americanized. So, like, Asians would be like, that's not real Asian food. It's kind of like Taco Bell. Or people, like, Mexicans or Hispanics might be like, that's not real Mexican. That, that's just, like, you know, some watered-down version of it. Like, do you feel like American Afrobeats music that, you know, everybody's kind of grabbing on because it's the wave now? Do you feel like that's a bit watered-down here in America? Uh, like, how do you feel about the entire movement over here? When, when you say, like, American Afrobeat music, like, made Afrobeats made by Americans? Yes. I don't know. I, 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 I haven't really heard a lot of those. It's, it's a wave, man. It's like... Afro Can you give me some examples? Uh, I would say... I, I don't know if it's Afrobeats. I feel like it might be something different. You can correct me on it. One, I'll say one dance. It's like the first thing I think about. Oh, okay, okay, okay. One dance. One dance was like... I wouldn't say it's a watered-down version. I'll say it's like a a fusion of something else you know like a fusion of like because at the end of the music is all about like your own experiences mixed with like or whatever is going on mixed with your own experiences and your own sonics and whatever so like there's no way you expect drake to be on the exact same type of afrobeat sounds that we're doing like drake was inspired by so many different things and obviously those things will come to show so that's what I think is, is like a different variation. To be honest, for Afrobeats to become like a, a genre that's like fully blown up and like a household name, it needs to be blended with so many different things. You feel me? Like hip hop has like blended in so many different ways, even back in Nigeria. Pop music has blended with different sounds. So for Afrobeats to get to that point, you know, it needs to actually blending with stuff so things like that are necessary so you're honest. saying instead of a, like a, a versus type deal like yeah. this, i feel like um even just with in the general if you want to go beyond that of just like our relationship of like africans versus african americans i feel like there's always kind of been this like clash of like you know black americans we don't have an identity so we like we look to you guys and we're like homeland and then a lot of times y'all are just like you ain't real african <laughs> <laughs> I guess you know how is that kind of I don't I don't know. I don't think Nigerians or Africans say black Americans are in, are in real real well, Africans. There's been a lot of experiences that I've had with Africans kind of growing up of like uh, I even think it's the other way in right. in like cuz one time we were on this Twitter space, right? Mm -hmm. And the whole thing was about Africans when black Americans were not 
accepting that they were Africans. Yeah. They real like they they weren't accepting. They were like we 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 Americans or something. Like I don't know what the conversation was, and you know it was it just created a rift. But I don't really behind people over there say you are not real Africans. Like yeah. we see them as like people here as Africans when I mean, they black heritage and stuff. So I don't know. So, so, but, but that's like the same way that you're saying, like that kind of um, embracing, you know, right? Of like both sides embracing each other. If you guys do that on a musical level, then it would take Afrobeat so far. Because I feel like already on, on the black side of things, kind of the biggest artists in America right now do come from Afrobeat. Like Burner Boy, Wiz Kid, and, and Tim. Like that's like the big three are probably like the biggest black artists outside of Drake, obviously, um, right now. So it's like you say. Afrobeats can go even further if it continues to infuse itself in American hip hop culture. Yeah, like in, in, in every every like even in Europe in whatever, like people for example, like there's a lot of hip hop in Nigeria, there's a lot of hip hop in so many countries, you feel me? And you know, when it started it, it didn't start everywhere, you know, people started adopting it and started, you know, infusing it with different things to create different results. So I think it's a part of the evolution of Afrobeats. I grew up on so 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 many different kind of music, you know. I grew up on a lot of R&B, on a lot of like um, church music too, because my mom was a, a, a worker in the church. Uh, and like hip hop, a lot of hip hop too, you know. And obviously, I'm in Nigeria, so I I listen to a lot of Afrobeats, and you know, it, it wasn't called that before. Like I don't know. We never really had a name for it. There were so many different people making different songs and stuff that I grew up on. So I think it's, I don't know. To be honest, I don't, the whole concept of the naming, I'm not too versed on it, but like, I'm, I, I'm, I make my own type of you know music influenced by all these other things that I'm influenced by. It's not something you can box in. Yeah, it's not something you can box in. Who are some of the artists that you uh, worldwide or like in Nigeria? No, worldwide. Worldwide. Uh, obviously, like I used to like um, clips of like Michael Jackson watching him dance, you know, on stage. Those were really good. You know, those were really, really good. Uh, I've always listened to Lil Wayne, you know, Drake. Always, you know, uh, MI in Nigeria that inspired me to rap. Um, Kanye, Rihanna, I used so many influences from over here, so many, like I was a proper, like I used to have my iPod, what was it, iPod, I couldn't afford the iPod, I had this other one, like an MP3 thing like this, oh, yeah. it was really slim, yeah. and I just be playing, you know, I'll buy this CD that has like 300 American songs, yeah. and I'll just be jamming it up. Uh, I kind of like I had a song with Luda Chris, okay, you yeah. know, uh, Cinderella girl. That was nice. I do you know. Um, there's a few other people that I, I intend to meet on this trip. You know, I, I saw I was with like Wale like yesterday or so two nights ago or something. And you know, I have like different link up with like a few other people planned, and it'll be nice to you know see what it's like working with these people. No, I heard, I heard. Now the thing I really wanted to get into is fit. Like I said, I. Compliment the tape before we went. Um, like, just what's the rundown of the fit, man? Starting with the shoes. Man, like, uh, this is a stylist, buddy, yeah. you know, and this pants. Yeah. Uh, I don't even know what the pants are, but like, I like them. I like free pants. Yeah. You know, and then um, I have this, like, s small size t shirt inside. I got this like I think in Canada or so and this jacket I don't know I generally don't know the names of all these things I just <laughs> like if I like it I like it so nah, nah I heard it I heard it alright cool 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 so um I guess if you have one person that you could collaborate with next who, who would it be you talked about all the people you kind of like met and all the people you looked to uh to linking up with by your game states 
Uh, man, there's so many people, man. So many people, but like, definitely, like the number one artist I can't wait to work with, like, is Drake. You know, I can't wait to hear how that sounds. You know, but like, there's so many other people I love to work with. You know, but like, I really love to work with Drake. Has he ever like liked any of your posts on social media or anything? I don't think so. I feel like if he has. I would know, like, yeah. cause although some things could be hidden, but I feel like people will first find out and be like, "Oh, yeah. oh my God, Drake, Drake dude!" Like yeah, so you know when you get the Drake, yeah, on, exactly, just, exactly. It's yeah, it's a whole thing. thing. So, uh, dang, all right, all right. So, oh, who who are some artists in Nigeria that are popping? You know that you could put on song with right now. Uh you guys already know Rema. You yeah. know, yeah. you know, um, Omale. Do you know Amale? I don't think so. Uh, no, that like, is really good. Really, really good. Like, his music is really, like, deep and, like, you know, reflective. Okay. You know, um, um, you already know Ashake, right? Yeah, 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 uh-huh. Yeah, Ashake. I'm going to the show on, uh, on Friday. Man, man, man. man. Mm-hmm. We, went to, we went to school together. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. How was that? Yeah, it was crazy. But I'm, I'm going to be at his show, too, so. Uh, in New York? Yeah, in, yeah, in New York. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> You know, that's my bro. We've known each other for many, many years. Uh, I, I'm not gonna press. I'm not gonna press. I was gonna ask if you get it that stage, but I ain't gonna press. <laughs> I'm not gonna do that. But yeah. I guess you know, just like how was that kind of like you know, what I'm saying going to high school with somebody else who's popping. Both of y'all kind of coming up at the same time, for real. Yeah, even you, you know, Fireboy too. No, no. I'm oh, okay, sure. yeah, but I you probably heard that Peru record, the Peru oh, Para. Oh. Yeah, like so, we, we all went to school together, and you know, um. It's interesting because like now it feels like the only time we really see is like far from home. Yeah. You know, last time I saw him was in Miami, yeah. you know, like months ago. And now it's like, yeah, so, so it's like interesting to see us come from there and try to do all these things that we're doing. So. Um, people always talk about the power of networking. It's like the, if you around nine broke people, like you're the 10 broke person. If you're around nine rich people, you're the 10th rich person. Like, what do you think is the power of like kind of like I mean, because, you know, for y'all to go to the same school and be as successful as y'all are, like, you know, what, what do you just think is the power of having the right people around you coming up? I, I, I think OU was so hard. Like, the, the students were so hard to impress, right? So I think that kind of forced all of us to be, be ready to evolve with our music. Because, like, when you come, up, they, they could, like, they'll boo you, they'll go crazy, it's, you know, say a lot of shit, you know, so... You had to keep working hard and keep working hard. So I feel like the conditions were just right in the school. As soon as we came out, we felt like we could take on anything, you know. Yeah, no, 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 for sure, for sure. Well, uh, what, is, what like kind of like role does your faith serve in your career? You know, what? You, uh, what role does your faith serve in your career? You said your mom worked in the church coming up and stuff like that. Okay. Sure. What role does my faith? Yeah, your faith. Yeah. Faith. You, you oh, faith. In God. Yeah. Uh. Hmm. I, I honestly I don't know, you know, these days uh it's a little bit conf- conflicting but I just I believe that like I believe in being a good person and you know um regardless of whatever is going on, like if you're good to the people around you, I believe that good will come to you and that's the one thing that I believe, you know, like the Bible says love you know, love your neighbor as yourself. That's the number one rule. And that's, you know, the fact that I follow that one rule, I feel like that's, you know, a strong enough show of faith and stuff. You still believe in God? Not as much as I used to, you know, because... It, it seems like, you got, you got, like, I mean, you got on the all black, you know, the song is saying, oh, that beauty and the beast, I don't believe in love. Like, you saying, like, oh, God is cool, but I don't know if I believe in love. But you good? You, you all right? <laughs> I just, you know, like, personally, I feel like there are too many people going through too much bad shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, that's understandable. You feel me? Like, so when I look, like, I, I believed a lot growing up, but, like, when I look back at the people that... I went to my church one time, yeah. the church I grew up in, right. and I did... The things I saw, I didn't like. Mm-hmm. You know, it looked like almost all, most of the people, life got worse for them. Yeah. You know, and it was... It was sad for me, because in my mind, I'm like, 
you believed, you gave your all, you know, you served, you prayed, you did this, and life is still kind of like this. So I just think life is life, right? You have to do the right things, regardless of, you know, if you believe in God or not. You have to treat people right. You, you have to, you can't just not do all these things and just go and pray and think everything will be perfect. You have to actually, like, follow, like, these rules you know you have to act you have to be smart you have to you have to hustle you have to be dedicated so i don't really just sit down and think you know god is doing something somewhere i think we're created you know and given like a set of rules so if you are smart you make the best of it you know? do you um uh what, what i'm gonna ask for that do you oh yeah do you feel survivor's guilt do you ever feel that like of, of making it big you know what i'm saying like you're crossing over now the popularity is to the states and everything like that and then like you say you go back to your your church that you grew up in and you see things getting worse with people do you ever feel any sense of guilt from that yeah i'm one of the people that i don't really like seeing people linking people from like my past because not because i don't want to see them but like i don't want when they see how i live it makes me feel bad and sad you know kind of like the survivors guilt and stuff so i don't want them to other people will see it as oh let me show this guy that i'm i'm really you, you popping and really person. like but i don't really like it like so i i disconnect from a lot of them because when they see it it's, i'm just going to seem like this oh this big guy that has everything right you know and i, I don't really like it so much yeah. so I, I guess how do you deal with that i just don't link them up you know i try not to yeah. to to be with link them what i do is like the people that for my really formative years like i consider my university days formative years so those are the friends and those are the relationships i really hold on to i don't try to bring the really old ones you know that they on, don't understand the struggles and the grind you know that we went to they were not seeing that all they know is i went to school with this guy maybe in um um, um high school or whatever and Facebook, you feel me? And all of a sudden, these guys. Yeah. So I, I try not to, you know, um, link them as much as possible. Like it's sad because a lot of them find, see it as like me being me. You no, know, we're trying to, you know, link you. You're not responding, blah blah blah. But like, I don't really want to to. I I don't want to be like I'm flexing on them, and you. Yeah. Can't, you can't save everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, what, what, um, okay, I guess we, we go to um, just, you know, where, where can the people uh, find you and follow you on social media? Um, it's at B-L-A-Q, at B-L-A-Q-B-O-N-E-Z on every platform, TikTok, IG, Twitter. And I'm really fun on this platform, so make sure to follow me. And, uh, you know, like I said, we ask every MC that steps in, man. Yeah. Hey, they can give us a few bars, a, a little sample, or anything like that. Uh, give us something. I don't know. Like, can I do something already? Yeah, 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 yeah. Wow, my memory is good. Where have I been this oily the whole time? You want oily? I mean, eh? I feel like you want oily. Okay, fine, fine. Oh, what can I, what can I wrap up? Shit, my memory. Now, are there any MCs that just say no? They don't like. Uh, a, a couple do. A couple do. Uh, please let me be one of the ah! couple. Ah! <laughs> let me be one of the couple. Hey, maybe next time. Maybe next. <laughs> maybe next time. Maybe, maybe next, next time. time. Yeah. But all right, cool. I appreciate the time so much. Thank you, bro. Thank you. Until next time, please take care of yourselves. Thank you.